Hello. In the last video, we looked at the production of urea, the uh, main molecule of nitrogenous waste that we produce from deamination. And in this video, we're going to see how we then get rid of that urea. You'll remember it's been carried off in the hepatic vein back into circulation. And now it's going to arrive at the kidneys and we're going to do something about getting rid of it. These are our kidneys. We've got the right kidney on this side and the left kidney over there. And we've got the aorta coming down this way. And that's going to feed blood into the renal artery here, which will then branch off and put blood at high pressure into our kidney. Urine is produced. We're going to urine going down here. These are the ureters. That's the right ureter, the left ureter over here. And then here we've got blood coming back this way in the renal vein. And that's going to go back into circulation in the vena cava. I'll just put a few of these names up here for you. Vena cava. I'll try that again. And the aorta. Renal artery and renal vein. And the job of the kidneys will be to remove urea or as much as of it or as much of it as it can and to control blood water potential and volume more of that in the next video in the meanwhile we want to look at one of the functional units of the kidney now you can see here that it's split up we've, we've kind of opened it up and looked at the uh, vascularization inside uh, all this white bit here these are waterproof lined tubes and they're going to carry the urine down the ureter to the bladder but around here you can see these little structures around the outsides now those are the functional units of the kidney those are nephrons they're about half a million nephrons in each of our kidneys and this is what one of them looks like in diagrammatic form at any rate uh, different zones to them we let's get this labeled up number one the glomerulus Whoop, that should be a u this here is the glomerulus it's a knot of capillaries forming this ball here surrounding the glomerulus is the bowman's capsule sometimes called the renal capsule i call it the bowman's capsule and then feeding blood into the glomerulus here under high pressure we have the afferent arteriole afferent means towards and that brings in high blood pressure here or bl uh, blood at high pressure there and coming out we have the efferent arteriole arteriole is just a word meaning small artery you'll see that the lumen of the afferent arteriole is wider than the lumen of the efferent arteriole uh, so that forms a back pressure back into here because it's harder for the blood to leave the glomerulus than it is to enter it so that generates a high blood pressure in here and that's going to be really really useful uh, for what we call ultrafiltration we'll look at that in the next slide in the meanwhile we have other regions of the nephron this region here da -da 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 -da, is the proximal convoluted tubule proximal means closest to so it's the convoluted tubule that's closest to the glomerulus then this region here is the loop of Henle this region here the second wibbly wobbly bit is the distal convoluted tubule and then this bit along here is the collecting duct. Let's zoom into the glomerulus and Bowman's capsule. Now in this image we're looking at the process of ultrafiltration. Now that is filtration that's happening at a high pressure. You'll remember there's high pressure inside here. Now you can think of this region like a sieve. If you've got small molecules they are going to be able to leave the blood. We've got blood at high pressure, and so it's going to be forced out. This here is an image of a close-up of this barrier here. Inside here, we've got 
the glomerulus. So we're in a capillary, this is in the blood, and surrounding it, we've first of all got this basement membrane along here, and also we've got what are called podocyte foot processes, and you can see there's only small gaps between them. Now, what this means is that only small molecules can get across here. When I say small, not that small, um, you know, up to a relative molecular mass of about 64,000 or so. But nonetheless, the very big proteins, they can't get across, and certainly no cells or stuff like that, they can't get across either. So what we have going across from the blood into the Bowman's capsule here are small molecules such as glucose, water, salts, so e.g. Na+, plus, Cl-, minus, etc., other ions, amino acids, and, of course, urea. Now, that's the one we're going to be most interested in. But immediately, you can see a problem. If this fluid here that's entered the glomerulus, called the glomerular filtrate, often with an R on the end of it, is just going down here to be taken to the bladder, to be lost, to be urinated away, then what we certainly don't want to do is lose a whole ton of glucose, all our water, all our salts, and all our amino acids. That's going to be a tremendous waste. So what are we going to do about that? The answer to that is we are going to reabsorb all or most of the useful molecules and let the urea mainly just carry on all the way to the bladder without being reabsorbed. And that's going to happen for the main part here in the first bit of the nephron, the first kind of next bit of the nephron, in the proximal convoluted tubule. That's this bit along here, up to and including to about this point here. You can see there's a capillary wrapped around it as well, and it's into this capillary that we're going to absorb some of these useful products. So, we have glucose. All is reabsorbed. And if we're going to reabsorb all of it, it's going to be done by active transport. That is that type of moving molecule which needs an energy input. It's going to require ATP from respiration and it's going to work against a concentration gradient and can work all the way until you know, there's going to be a trace left, but it's, uh, it's going to be very difficult to measure. We don't lose glucose in our urine if we have uh, healthy kidneys and healthy blood glucose levels. We're going to do the same for amino acids. All are reabsorbed by active transport. And as glucose, oh, I'm going to change my color here. And as glucose and amino acids are passed from the glomerular filtrate into the blood, well, what's going to happen to the water potential of the blood? We're going to put more solutes into it, and therefore the water potential gets lower, and therefore water follows by osmosis. So water is reabsorbed by osmosis. And we have many of the salts reabsorbed as well. You'll notice what we're not doing here is reabsorbing the urea. So urea can't get back into that blood there. Well, actually a little bit can, but we don't reabsorb urea. We do reabsorb massive quantities of water. Just to give you an idea of the quantities we're talking about, we're going to produce a glomerular filtrate, uh, if we're an adult male, of 180 litres or dm cubes per day. Now remember, that compares with a blood volume of 5 dm cubed approximately for an adult male. And so you can see, if we really are losing this enormous quantity of water straight down to the bladder, down that way to the bladder every day, we're going to urinate away all our liquid very quickly. And so you can see how much of the water needs to be reabsorbed. And most of the reabsorption of water happens at the proximal convoluted tubule. Most of it occurs here. So, as the volume of water in here goes down, but the mass of urea doesn't go down by nearly so much, you can see the concentration of urea by the time we get to here is going to be much higher. We're going to have a much higher concentration of urea. We're going to have no glucose, we're going to have no amino acids, and also don't forget that we've left our proteins behind here in the blood anyway. The proteins haven't been able to leave the blood, the blood cells haven't been able to leave the blood, so all the proteins stayed in there. So by this stage we should just have salty water, there will still be some salt in there, with urea. And that's as we enter the loop of Henle. The rest of the nephron, the functional unit of the kidney, is all about 
concentrating the urine. So here, in this zone here, we've got ultrafiltration going on here. We've got selective reabsorption going on in this zone here. And then all of the rest of it is about concentrating our urine. And that's going to produce urine uh, with a smaller volume of water and with a really high concentration of urea. Really, that's what we're after. We're after losing as much urea as we possibly can while not losing too much water. And actually, that brings us into a little adaptation. This structure here called the loop of Henle and this structure here called the collecting duct, these structures are really involved in concentrating the urine. And so if you're an animal like a gerbil or a desert rat or a kangaroo or a camel, you have a really long loop of Henley and a really long collecting duct. Whereas if you're something like a beaver, lives in fresh water and has access to huge quantities of fresh water, actually the loop of Henley is pretty short. Likewise, the collecting duct. So at this point then, we have urine which is ready to go. That goes down this collecting duct here. It goes to the pelvis of the kidney, just around here, and then that gets taken down the ureter, down to the bladder here, where it's controlled by a sphincter at the base of the bladder, and then at an appropriate moment, off it goes. It's urinated away out through the urethra. And here is an image of a cow doing that. So here are the stages of urine formation. This is a nice little summary screen. I'm going to leave it up here uh, for those of you who might want to scribble it down. Thank you.